Is it heretical to believe, say, or teach that God needs us? Because I've seen <laughs> classes yeah. online that say yes. Yeah, yeah, no. yeah. Are both opinions valid, or is only one right? But this is the great controversy about Rabbi Manis uh, Friedman, who is an extremely popular Chabad speaker. In fact, uh, the advertisement goes, the most popular rabbi on the internet. Hmm, I, feel, I feel cheated, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, I'm not even near, I'm not even near his numbers. Uh, and um, Rabbi Friedman almost has a mantra, <laughs> borrowing on the Eastern uh, religion thing, uh, you know, you don't need God, you know, God needs you, God needs you, and therefore, uh, you know, you got to do your job. So uh, people like Rabbi Yosef Mizrahi, you know, uh, attack Rabbi Mizrahi. Half of Rabbi Mizrahi's shir is devoted to attacking Manus Friedman <laughs> uh, sometimes. It's an amazing thing. Again, this is all public, so I, I don't think there's much Nahara involved. And, Rabbi, and uh, Rabbi Mizrahi's argument is that God is perfect, right? It's, it's really a standard argument. God is perfect, God is whole, God has no needs. Uh, this is psukim in the Torah and psukim in the prophets that say, you can't give anything to God. And if you can't give anything to God, all the mitzvahs are just for us. So how could somebody say that God is needy? That's a contradiction to God's omnipotence. So he takes the position that Rabbi Friedman is a heretic and not the chorus and, and, and the like. Well, here is the thing. Um, there may be an issue, I mean, again, I, I, actually, I don't want to criticize anybody. I mean, I mean, there may be an issue in the way something is said, right? The way you say it, the provocative way you say it. But the truth is, there is truth in what Rabbi Friedman is saying in the following idea. I mean, let's take the Derech Hashem that everybody knows, although it's not, it's not such an, an easy idea, right? Hashem created the world in order to bestow his goodness, right? Everyone, everyone in Orsameach has learned that uh, passage or that idea a million times, right? That's one of the most famous ideas that every Rebbe here has taught more than once, right? Hashem's desire is to bestow his goodness, and that is why he had to create a world where he could bestow his goodness, and if he would bestow his goodness without us struggling and earning it, it would be the bread of embarrassment, right? You know that? And that wouldn't be totally good, Therefore, Hashem had to create a struggle for us to go through, right, etc. Now, just, let's just take the Ramchal, which is actually not the Ramchal, it's from the Arizal, but, but the, the Ramchal uh, articulates it. Isn't that saying that God needs to do something? God needs to be able to give of his goodness. So, to make the statement that it's impossible to say God needs something seems to contradict the very aspect of the Ramachal. Now, I'll say this. God's needs are self-created, meaning to say God does not have an intrinsic need. God could have willed not to be made to. So in a sense, God's wants become, becomes God's needs, as God willed to have this particular need. So it's not a contradiction to his omnipotence because he could have willed not to have, right, like hunger. When I'm hungry, I have to eat. I can't will, I mean, maybe I could, you know, knock myself out or something, but I can't will to take hunger away. So I'm kind of a slave to my need. God, in that sense, is not a slave to his need. God could will himself in any type of situation. But I don't think it's false to say he has willed himself to have certain needs, among which to be native. So Rabbi Friedman's statement that God has needs is not as preposterous as you would assume. It actually is based on, well, he wouldn't say it's based on that, but, but it is connected to what the Derech Hashem uh, says and, and, and the like. Now, God has needs as well, because if Hashem wants certain things to be accomplished in this world, and he entrusted us to accomplish it, so God desires that we keep the Torah. Well, God needs that we keep the Torah, because that's God's desire. And we're the only ones that can give him that desire. He could have willed it the other way. So the thing is, if you take Rabbi Friedman's statements and you just, you know, translate them into a slightly different way of saying it, you know, it's not even that controversial, really. I think it's, it's, it's evident 
that God has a will that certain things be done, and those, that will is defined as his needs. And that's really the Rabbi Freeman's point, that we have a job to do. That, that's really the chizik that he's giving. We have a job to do in this world, and God needs us to do that job. Now, the truth is, if you look at the Nefesh HaChayim of Rav Chaim Belozhner, which was written the same time as the Tanya, in fact, it's very interesting, Tanya and Nefesh HaChayim are almost engaged in a silent dialogue in which neither one mentions the other, but they're almost talking to each other in some ways. The Nefesh HaChayim also says that God needs us because God wants to be native, but he can't release his hatava except through our Torah and our mitzvahs that open up the pipelines. So Hashem needs us to open up the pipelines which enables him to give. And that is also a need of, of God. Right? So uh, I, I, I don't think it's apicorsus, actually. I, I think it's, it is legitimate. 